What's up, Donald Red? Jose Gilbert? We're just out here, man, loving every second of this. Absolutely beautiful. In uh, Atlanta, Georgia. 59 degrees. Just a tad bit above cold. Woo! Lord have mercy. Here, just loving it. This is what we do. We do this right here. You gotta lead it over. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We just try to do what we do out here. Y'all need to let me over now. I'm just a little bitty motorcycle out here. I'm not all that big. Oh, yeah. Things to talk to you guys about. Oh boy, before I wreck my bike here. Let's see, uh, turn this around. Oh, I almost hit that curb. All right. <clears throat> so, I haven't been online in a minute, but I got some really neat subjects to talk to you guys about. Hey, uh, in a couple of, uh, in a couple of hours or so, I'm gonna be back on. Uh oh Donald Red Donald Red got his in this morning. <laughs> man oh man it's beautiful out here. And the you know we must be in global warming or something because we're in the middle of we're in late February. I mean late February. And 
Yeah, we rolling around out here like it's summer and stuff, like it just, like, like you shouldn't even be doing. Although we ride year round, it's still beautiful out here. But I got some really neat subjects I'm going to be talking to you guys about that uh, will blow your mind. Um, a couple things I want to talk to you about. We uh, got the summer coming up, and with the summer coming up, we have um, a lot of you cats that are going to be riding to California. Uh, what's up there? Road orphans out there in... Uh, in uh, in Hawaii, what's up, y'all? And uh, just ordered Sergeant at Arms Bible. Thank you, brother. And uh, love Prospects Bible. I love to hear that. That's outstanding. When I wrote that, I thought to myself, nobody's gonna ever like it. <laughs> so I'm so pleased that uh, that uh, you guys are finding that book. And I tell you something, it's selling worldwide. If I got people in Australia buying that book, I'm just so touched, I don't even know what to say, that uh, Australian brothers would be reading my book. You know, a guy from Oklahoma. Wow. And, uh, you know, uh, it's just amazing. Uh, I know how an artist might feel when somebody um, uh, sings their song. Or I had a guy come up to me the other day, and he was just quoting me passages out of the Prospects Bible. And I, I just sitting there with my mouth wide open, like it's still hard to believe. It's a it's a blessing, but it's still kind of hard to believe. And I hope that you guys find Sergeant at Arms Bible equally uh, as informative. Uh, I've got I'm working right now on the Secretary's Bible, and I'm working on the Treasurer's Bible right now. And uh, after that, I guess I'll be trying to tackle the VP's Bible and the President's Bible. And my last Bible will be the National President's Bible, I believe. So, you know, I'm working on those and uh, whatever else. What's up, uh, oh, Ojeda, Ojeda. What's up, John? What's up, Prodigals Redeemed? Houston, it's good to see you guys. Uh, it's, uh, oh, Paul, Paul is in Seattle, not, not, uh, uh, not Hawaii, sorry. Oops. So, uh, what's up, everybody? Uh, John, love and respect, brother Ojeda. 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 The E is pronounced A. Yeah, yeah I don't know all this stuff. So, um, I, uh, I got a couple things that I'm going to be talking to you guys about. I'm here in uh, Atlanta, Georgia on Memorial Avenue, Memorial Boulevard, I think. And it's an interesting street. A lot goes on on the street um, that's good and bad. Uh, there's a lot of poverty on the street and some, uh, some people making a lot of money. It's an interesting street in, um, in, in, in uh, northern Atlanta. This is really considered out, uh, out, out of the perimeter, in uh, kind of north eastern Atlanta, on your way to like Lithonia or something. Uh, but it's an interesting, thriving community that we ride in. Uh, the Rare Breed Motorcycle Club had a had a, a clubhouse once on this street. It's an amazing street, and uh, I've been doing some research. People say, "Where have you been?" And uh, I've been doing some research so that my videos coming forward can be a lot more informative and uh, cover a lot more topics that, that are important to our lifestyle. And there's two things I'm going to be talking to you. I might do one a little bit later, like maybe an hour from now. It depends on what time I get home. But there are two, two subjects on my mind that I'll be talking about within the next day or so. One subject is... With 2017, uh, when are you coming to Seattle? Woo! Washington? Isn't it raining right there? I mean, it's cold as shit out there. Uh, forget my language. Oops. Um, I think we're supposed to be out there in uh, June, bro. Um, Big Meech, my number two, says he wants to do a four corners ride and touch all the states or something. I, I don't know how that works, but we're supposed to touch every state or something. 
and then we're supposed to ride to every Black Sabbath chapter and all that there. So I think that'll bring us to Seattle, my bro. And uh, we're coming. So uh, we'll let you guys know we're supposed to do that in June. Going out to the uh, Black Sabbath Inland Empire uh, annual dance. Uh, that'll be the, the end of our ride. So, uh, or, or actually halfway, because then we got to come back. So, two things I want to talk to you about. There's been some changes in 2017 with respect to the gun laws in California. The gun laws in California are absolutely draconian. Is that a word? Uh, terrible. That's a word. Um, Anti-Second Amendment-ish. Amendment-ish. Is that a word? Uh, the NRA probably had a baby when these laws came out. Like, they're absolutely ridiculous. The thing that you got to know, because I got a lot of brothers that are going to be riding to California, they've got concealed gun permits, and they're going to be carrying weapons. I mean, you know how we get down. And there's some stuff you got to know about traveling in California uh, before you take your behind out there. You know, I'm not cursing anymore. Before I take your butt out there and not be able to come back home for 10, 15 years. And uh, part of what you got to know is about these things here. These uh, get back whips or braids that you ride with so beautifully here in the great land of Atlanta, Georgia. You can't have that stuff out there. So we're going to talk about that. And uh, we're also going to talk about civil asset forfeiture. Isn't that a beautiful term? It sounds so cool until you find out what it really is, which is theft of your money and you not being able to fight that theft even in a court of law. And when I say theft of your money, I mean theft of your money by the police department it can happen to any uh, biker black white yellow purple or red and uh, it's something that we got to talk about so those are my next two videos civil asset forfeiture and uh, the draconian gun laws of California we got the summer coming up and when the summer comes up and we start riding out there you know black sabbath we ride out there in the middle of the winter but we're going to be riding out there in the summer this time and uh yeah i think i will do that uh ojeda ojeda i think i will do that the um uh i will do uh how to open up clubs and how to go national i will do one of those videos or a few of those videos um let's see what else what to do brother hitta what up Sabrina Castello, Cooper, how are you doing, sweetie? Michigan is having a lot of issues with civil asset forfeiture. Man, they need to come up with a better word for it. Uh-oh, I'm supposed to be turning here. Uh, they need to come up with a better term for civil asset forfeiture, like civil asset theft. Um, it started out as a good thing, but as with all good things, they just take it too far, and they go too far with it, you know. And that's how they get down. They just go too darn far with it. And it's happened to me before. Um, only the only thing that saved me, I'm convinced. I'm absolutely convinced that it was going to happen to me. And the only thing that saved me was uh, they figured out at the last minute I was uh, ex-military, I was ex-Navy. And it's probably because I started screaming at them. Uh, I know what you SOBs are trying to do to me. You know, uh, I didn't serve my country to have this kind of, sh something like that. And uh, that's when they, f they were like, oh my God, you're military. Let us get you right out of here. I got to tell you that story. It's absolutely frightening. As in, I was scared. 
and uh, and when you get a big old six foot four, three hundred and ten giant like me terrified, uh, just from you pulling me over, <laughs> you've done something. So these guys are scary, and uh, what it is that they do. So we're going to talk about that uh, on these videos that I got coming up, and. Um, I hope that uh, you guys tune in. Uh, it's going to be some exciting stuff to talk about. The civil asset forfeiture thing, man, I got all kinds of research I've done on it. I, uh, I can tell you how it works. I can tell you where they use it, uh, your rights. And I've come up with some ideas about uh, where am I going. I've been trying to call you all day, uh, Sergeant at Arms, to have you meet me out here. Uh, we got some of our brothers up from Macon, uh, from the Macon chapter, and uh, they wanted me to ride over and meet them. I think they're over at Sudo's right now. So, you didn't get my text messages? Uh, but right now I'm over in Stone Mountain. Uh, hey, I'm near your house. Give me a call when I get off. Aren't, don't you live in Stone Mountain? You live right off of, uh, I'm up here on uh, Harrison and, um, and, and, uh, uh, you know, Memorial Drive. That's what it is, Memorial Drive, not Memorial Boulevard. I'm over here at the Caribbean American. So, uh, as soon as I get off this thing, give me a holler, get him up. Tess is extremely tough on uh, patching in color holders. <laughs> yeah, Tess, this is about one of the toughest. Texas and Florida, real tough there. Oh, you're still sick, bro? Damn. I hope you get better. I didn't know you were still sick. Well, I knew you were sick, but I didn't know you were like sick like that. Poor thing. You want some uh, Theraflu or something? So uh, that's what we're going to be talking about: civil asset forfeiture and uh, the draconian go law, g gun laws that have hit California, and what you need to know taking your firearm on your motorcycle into California. Firearm bullets, uh, magazines, uh, some of you commonly refer to them as clips, uh, bullet holders. You're far from those. you need to be going on 20. Yeah, I had to stop over here and see someone. Uh, 10 people have reacted to this video so far. Oh, that's cool. Um, what else? It's, uh, it's going to be a cold one tonight. The temperature has been dropping even as I'm riding, but it is absolutely beautiful. And it's even more cool if you have one of these heated liners on. I know. <laughs> kind of wimpish. I know. But uh, they're cool. You just turn them suckers on, and it's all toasty. And then, of course, the heated seats. Nothing like a warm booty. And the heated hand grips. I'm telling you. And these are the things that come on a uh, 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 these are the things that come on a uh, on a victory, which unfortunately, <laughs> wimpish are just plain smart. Both. I'll take D. All of the above. Wimpish and plain smart. <laughs> and, and don't forget warm. Uh, you don't even need gloves when you have uh, heated hand grips. You just come out in these. It's cool. So. Uh, California is crazy with these gun laws, and they'll put you um, in jail. Uh, <laughs> thanks a lot, Club Brother. Uh, they'll put you in jail for not having uh, uh, the right stuff. For uh, um, they'll put you in jail for not for having the wrong magazine, and they'll put you in jail for years and years and years and years, even though. You're illegal to hang out in Georgia and have your pistol on you anywhere. Uh, so we're going to talk about that. You know, in Georgia, you can even have a switchblade here. Not there. You can have noon checks here. Not there. You can uh, you can carry a gun on your side like Wyatt Earp and them. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> and in Oklahoma, too, where I come from, it's the wild, wild west out there. But California is the west. But it's not so wild, wild. It's only wild, wild for the criminals. The rest of us, draconian laws. So these laws took, uh, took place, some of them, January 1, 
and others you have into July, uh, and it's just really kind of bad. Uh, so we don't want to go out to California with a gun on our bikes, not knowing uh, the new laws in California. Jerry Brown passed them, uh, the governor there. And, uh, you know, I love Democrats until they get on this gun BS. <laughs> then uh, we de have a departure from spec right there. I, I, don't, I don't follow this. Uh, some of the things I can tell you about, what they've done, I can tell you about this because it's not going to be part of the show, but what they have done with the uh, AR-15 or the so-called um, assault weapons. You know, what gun is not an assault gun? Like, you can kill just as many people with that 22 I grew up with my grandfather, or that Winchester 3030 like, uh, like Lucas McCain used to have, with the big loop handle on it. At least, that just, that just, just shoots. But that's not an assault weapon. But if it looks like something that an army man would have, it's an assault weapon. So they've done all kinds of things to this. Uh, they removed the bullet button. Now you got to actually break the gun open to change the uh, receiver or, or to change the uh, magazine. They've um, they were all, they already were always after the flash suppressor the hand grip and the uh, four and, and the barrel grip. So they found a way to get rid of those again. They call it a featureless gun. Uh, and if you don't get rid of that, then you have to register your gun and then you can't will it, gift it, or sell it ever. When you die, that gun dies with you. <laughs> it's amazing. And you can no longer loan a gun to your family member or give a gun to your, you can't buy a gun for your daughter uh, or your grandkid. That person has got to go through a check. And man, watch this. The things they've done with, with ammunition. You now have to buy ammunition the way you do with a gun. You got to go through a background check to get ammunition. And they're attacking ghost guns. Ghost guns. What's a ghost gun? A ghost gun is um, a gun you build yourself and it doesn't have a serial number on it, where they're forcing you to put serial numbers on all your ghost guns. Ghost gun, where do they come up with names like that? Ghost gun. That's a gun I built at home. Give me a break. And uh, they want that ghost gun. Um, oh, and for those of us who say F you, you're not getting my damn ghost gun. I'm not putting it on any kind of a uh, list for you to come get it from my house like you did during Hurricane Katrina. You guys remember that? Hurricane Katrina? <laughs> Where they just went house to house and took everybody's gun? They had it on the government list. They come get your gun. So for guys to say I'm burying my ghost gun in my backyard in case of end times, well, they got a new thing where they're looking at the ammunition you buy because now you got to go and register your ammunition. Like, you got to go and buy ammunition the same way you buy a gun. You got to get a background check for ammunition. <laughs> so if you're buying ammunition for a gun that's not listed on your list of guns you can have, aha! You've got a ghost gun! And we're going to come use our civil asset forfeiture laws to go in your house and look and see and take everything we want out of there And that's all legal. It all kind of comes together. Gun laws, civil asset forfeiture laws. Oh my gosh, people, my good friends. And we as bikers, riding around in these colors, black bikers, white bikers, they already don't like us. They don't like the colors. So you are the prime targets, along with the gang members, because you are a gang member, along with the drug dealers, because you are a drug dealer, along with the gun runners, because you are a gun runner! We are the targets for these pullovers and illegal searches that are legal now, thought up by some idiot in an attorney's garb. I have some attorney friends, but not many. I don't really like those guys too much. They think of a whole lot of... <laughs> Sorry, I've stopped cursing. Um, 
yeah, it's something else. So I'll be talking to you guys about it. Uh, no, uh, they're going to come get more than your nuts, my brother. <laughs> they're going to come and get your guns and take your money. Take your money. And Oklahoma has a new thing. Oh, I can't wait to tell you guys about this in my video. I'm spoiling my video, but Oklahoma has a new thing where they can take your money off of your credit card out of your bank account and just seize it. Just take it. That's in Oklahoma. They can just take your money off of your bank account right now. Pull you over and take it. Black Dragon forever, forever Black Dragon. <laughs> I love it. Oh, but that's not a motorcycle club. We shouldn't do that. So, it's, uh, it's kind of scary, my brothers. All these laws are not going to stop people from killing each other. Oh, stop that. Did somebody say something of common sense value? They don't want to stop people from killing each other. They want to stop you from being able to fight them when they come across with this new world order shit. Stuff, stuff, stuff. And another thing. I talked to one of my brothers who's a truck driver today. And he told me, truckers are noticing UN delivery vehicles all over the country being delivered. Why do we have UN delivery vehicles over here? This motherfucker walking up behind me. Sorry about that. Like people walking up behind me. Uh, did I curse? I didn't mean to curse. Sorry. So, uh, oh my goodness, folks. There's just so much to talk to you about. We uh, got a lot of stuff going on out here. And uh, it's uh, frightening. So, we have to think about some ways in which we can defend ourselves legally and not get our money taken from us as we're driving down the street. If they can take it off your credit card. So, my next two videos will be civil asset forfeiture and gun laws in California. And these gun laws, somebody said today in a video I was watching, these gun laws are not going to be just in California. You know, so as California goes, so goes the nation. As New York City goes, so goes the nation. They kind of spread the stuff. So, um, huh, run for president. They don't let bikers do that. I've got a sordid checkered past. <laughs> Woo! I've cavorted with women and whores and prostitutes and the like and wild women and uh, I've converted with uh, outlaws and huh, I don't think they'd let me, well hell, they let Donald Trump be president and he did the same thing. <laughs> All right, uh, what else? U.S. is in some deep uh, stuff. You sure, you sure don't. You sure, it sure, it sure is. So, um, Oh, look at that beautiful Siamese kitten. So, uh, it's, uh, it's tough out here, folks. And uh, we got a lot to, uh, got a lot going on. The civil asset forfeiture. You know, how I came across this, uh, uh, a guy wrote to me a few months ago, Hey, Black Dragon, don't forget to talk about how they can just illegally take your money when they pull you over off the side of the highway. I just kind of like discounted him. Like, what the hell is he talking about? <laughs> uh, and I didn't know that this could happen until they pulled me over. What's up, King Rex? They pulled me over and uh, they were so egregious at trying to make me a dope dealer. And I believe that they were building up over there in Missouri to civil asset forfeiture, my black butt, until they realized I was in the Navy. Since that day, I have Navy stuff on everything. Ex-Navy, retired Navy, used to be Navy, Desert Storm, everything on my vehicles. You need everything you can have to uh, make them put you in the 
good guy category so that um, you, uh, you, you know, yes, I serve my country. You know, I never, you never walk around with that chip on your, on your uh, shoulder until you realize that they're pulling people over and taking your money off your credit card, baby, baby. I'm not lying. Look up Oklahoma. Look up uh, Civil Asset Forfeiture, Oklahoma. Uh, E-RAD, E-R-A-D, E-RAD. Edward, Romeo, Alpha, uh, David, E-RAD. E-RAD readers that can look at the microchip, not just on, they first started on your uh, prepaid cards, but these things can look at any and every card you have. They say it's so that we can check and make sure that that's your card. What the hell do you need to pull me over off of the highway for a broken tail light and check my credit card for? Boy, NSA and Snowden were just the beginning. And those of us who ride motorcycles and wear colors, you know, after they get rid of the uh, drug cartels, and after they get rid of the mafia, and after they get rid of uh, the street gangs, they won't have anybody else to mess with. But you, and you, and you, and you, and you, and uh, me. So, we got to be smart about it. I can't wait to uh, put my, I can't wait to see my next video. Got to be smart about it. Got to think about what we're going to do to defend ourselves uh, passively, of course. So how do you, how do you defend against a police officer who can pull you over and if you have $12,000 cash in your pocket, take it. And you never get it back. Even if you didn't commit a crime. You guys, I can't make this up. You never get it back, even if you didn't commit a crime. We suspect that you could be a drug dealer. We're taking your car. Guess what? You're not a drug dealer, and we're not going to file charges, but you're not going to get your car back. And if you do get it back, it'll be three years from now, after you fought a court battle so bad, it costs more money than the damn car. What's up, Chiba? Black Lacker? Or is that work? Uh, what's up? We don't get equal rights here, brother. I, you know, this is not even equal rights. Because <laughs> they're going to get you equally, no matter who you are, what color you are. These are no rights. We don't get no rights. So. We're going to talk about that in my next video, Civil Asset Forfeiture and Draconian Gun Laws in California. What you need to know before you take your butt to California with a, uh, with a uh, gun in your saddlebag. What's up, Benjamin? What's up? Dirty Boys MC. We doing good out here, man. So, uh, yeah, you can get on your motorcycle. You know the cool thing about riding through like Arizona or something. What up, Tony Sears? You, uh, whenever we get there to like Arizona, we pull over and pull our guns out. In the old days, we used to put them on our side like wider, talking at you. We'd ride with our arms out over our sides, you know, because that's where our guns were. Oh, it's beautiful to do that. Uh, but you better not do that in California. And I know some of you guys will be riding to California this year. There's a few states you got to, man, you got to be careful up in that Northeast Corridor too. New York City, New York City, New York City, uh, Jersey, God, Chicago. These are places we have to be very careful. 
with because they'll just pull you over and take your stuff even if you have the right to, like, like this one law if the place you're going to allows you to have a gun and the place you're going to get to or the place you're leaving from allows you to have a gun you can transport your gun through any state to get there but with these civil asset forfeiture laws they can take it anyway New Breed Riders, what's up? So, we have to uh, be very resolute. We gotta think about things like not having tail lights out. They can use a tail light to take everything you got. Vincent Walker in Guam! Oh my goodness! Guam! It's good to see you, brother. Boy, what's the weather like over there? It's cold as hell out here. Man! I got Guam on. I'm so excited. VIA is open carry, but you still better know the laws here. Commonwealth State. When am I coming back to Pensacola? Uh, I'm supposed to be coming down there soon. What's up, brother? Brother Trey, what's up? Man, you be careful out there driving, making that your way out there. Be very careful. But like I say, folks, I talked to a brother today who told me specifically they're transporting UN vehicles all over the country. What's going on with these draconian drug laws, or gun laws, draconian civil asset forfeiture laws? They're taking the weapons, they're monitoring the bullets that you buy, and in California, they're, they're, they're actually, hey, they got a new law. If you have a... Uh, a, a uh, magazine or you guys some of you guys call them clips if you've got a, a magazine the proper name is magazine the thing that holds the bullets not clip but if you have a magazine that carries more than 10 rounds that magazine must be destroyed sent out of the state turned into the police or sold to a dealer before, I think, uh, January 17th or something. June 17th, July 17th. If not, I think that's a felony. They're taking common, everyday good people and turning us into felons. For owning guns, we had, like, the first gun I bought in California when uh, the Brady Bill was about to pass, we ran out and we bought high capacity uh, magazines and we bought those, those uh, guns. We bought everything we could buy, uh, muzzle, fla uh, uh, flash suppressors, all that. We bought all that stuff and you could keep it because you bought it right before this ban went in that lasted for 10 years in California. And uh, they've outdone us. They've outthought us. Uh, they've outthought us because now you've either got to report that gun as a what they call an assault gun and when you report that gun okay I have one now it goes on a list and it can never be gifted it can never be bought it can never be sold it can't be willed away when you die when you die that gun will be collected in it will be destroyed. I guess maybe you could send it out of state. So, that's one thing. Or you have to uh, incapacitate that gun such that uh, you have to actually break it open in order to shoot it, uh, or in order to change the round. So, used to be you could slide a, uh, a, a magazine in it, shoot, hit a button, magazine drops out slide another one in there well for a while in california they had the bullet button which meant that you had to have a tool to make that magazine slide out now they've gotten rid of the bullet button and you got to actually break open the actions open it up like a 12 gauge shotgun double double sh barrel shotgun break it open like that then you can release the magazine 
put a new one in and put it back together. So it adds maybe 40 seconds to your reload time. Like that's gonna stop somebody from killing up a mall full of people. Now they'll just carry two guns. In any event, or you can make your gun featureless, your rifle, you can make it featureless, which means that you get rid of the uh, pistol grip, you get rid of the for, uh, barrel grip, you get rid of the flash suppressor, and you have what they call a featureless gun. Uh, it's pretty much the same as an old rifle with a long stock on it. You're not able to put your, so you can't you know, shoot it like that. Now, mind you, the police get to keep all of their fresh gear. The Army gets to keep all of its fresh shit. And the UN gets to keep all of their military hardware. And the police department gets to militarize up on your butt with their civil asset forfeiture money. Money taken from good citizens used to arm up the police department. Worse than SWAT, like a G.I. Joe outfit. And a small town with 25,000 people that has Humvees. <laughs> wow. Humvees! With machine gun turrets on top. What, are they going to show up at your domestic abuse? You and your wife get into it, she throws some scalding water on your cheating butt, and they show up with machine guns and Humvees? <laughs> So do you think it's a good time to buy a gun? It's always a good time to buy a gun. Ryan said, Ryan said, so that the private prisons can make money. I think privatized prisons are the most abomination to mankind. Prisons should be run by the government. How do you pay some third party private funds? So there'll, there'll never be any reason for rehabilitation. You're making too damn much money. $40,000 a prisoner per year. Put about a million of those cats in jail. And now you see why we have 2 million people in prison more than any civilized nation. I think more than any nation, period. 2 million people in prison. Wow. That's a lot of people. And we put them in prison for nothing. For absolutely nothing! Oh, Tony Sears just shared my video. Thank you, Tony. I don't know if everybody wants to get this video. So, civil asset forfeiture and draconian gun laws in uh, California. What you should know before you take your butt to California with a gun in your saddlebags. You might not be able to come back home for 10 or 15 years. Yes, the US does hold the number one spot for prisoners. Paul says, buy your guns up while you still can. I just sent you a message on Facebook, says Edward. Okay, bro. We will check it out. Anyway, I've talked enough uh, this Friday, or what is it, Saturday evening? And uh, see, I was having a good time. <laughs> <laughs> Made myself mad. Y'all have a good one. Get skinny. Be sure to get my new book, Sergeant at Arms Bible, at sergeantatarmsbible.com. And it's also on uh, Google. No, not Google. It's on um, Kindle. It's on Kindle and Amazon. You can get my books out of Barnes & Noble or any bookstore. You got to go in there and order it, and then it'll come to you in a week or so. Um... I need you to make that video because I'm about to take that ride. I'm going to make that video probably tonight, my bro. I'll probably make that video tonight. Uh, typically, uh, I make my videos on YouTube. It's got a better uh, feature, so I always tell people to go to YouTube, Black Dragon National President, to see my videos. Uh, Black Dragon National President on YouTube. Like my channel because that's good for my numbers and my stats and stuff. Please like my channel over there on YouTube. Like my videos. If my videos help you, please share my videos. Uh, just take the time it takes to press the share button so that people see my videos. I got a lot of haters out there who want to stop me from talking. So they do everything they can to talk negatively about my videos. 
So um, I need you. Thank you, Jackie. Uh, I love you too, baby girl. So um, it it uh, it's it's good for me. There's so many people that try to halt my videos, and there's one group. There's one guy out there who dedicated to stopping the messenger. He says, I've lost all credibility. I said something on Facebook that pissed him off. And uh, I often wonder, if uh, you didn't like a guy who slept with your wife, and he ran by and said, hey, your house is on fire, would you not listen to his message because you didn't like him? Ah, I'm not going to listen to you. My house ain't on fire. Go to hell. My house is on fire. So uh, a message is good if it helps you, no matter who it's coming from, wouldn't you think? So uh, I'm trying to tell you folks, um, share my videos, please. Like my videos, please. Go to Black Dragon, National President on YouTube, and like my page. And tell folks about me. And if you bought my book, please go on to Amazon and write a review, because that helps me too. Helps to get the word out, helps to get the message out. It's your part that you can do to help me. Uh, Sergeant at Arms Bible, Sergeant at ArmsBible.com, Prospects Bible, ProspectsBible.com, Prospects Bible for Women's Motorcycle Clubs, ProspectsBibleForWomen.com, and the Public Relation Officers Bible. Everybody hates that book so much because I use the word pro. Oh, they hate it so much. But I promise you, if you have a nightmare with the police department and you need to know how to repair your reputation or fight those bastards, forget my language, then you'll want to know what's in the PRO's Bible because it teaches you public relations basics and how to use media kits, press releases, how to manage a, a press conference, all of these things that might happen to your motorcycle club. You want to know those things. So, Motorcycle Club Public Relations Officers Bible, that's MCPROs, P-R-O-S, Bible.com. All my books are available on Amazon. All my books are available on Kindle. And yes, you can go get them at Barnes & Noble. Just go pay them first, and they'll order the book, and it'll come. Oh yeah, my new book, 60 Pounds in 60, day, uh, six, 60 Pounds in 6 Months is coming. You guys do know that I've lost like 80 pounds now. It's really awesome. So, anyway, I love you all. I'm over here on uh, Harrison and uh, Memorial Drive. And uh, I'm getting ready to go hang out. I think there's a car club having a party tonight. I might actually go to a car club party. We shall see. All right. Listen, uh, much love and peace. Thunder Guards Motorcycle Club is having uh, their annual here in Atlanta tonight. And uh, I hope they have a wonderful party and uh, lots of fun. You guys take care. Love you so much. And um, get skinny. Thank you, Paul, for ordering my book.